Shalom Israel, this is your brother Lamar Laka. And before I get started with this, I want to give all honor, praise, glory, reverence, esteem, and worship to the Most High God of Israel. And to Him only do I give praise. Today's lesson is Deuteronomy 28. Do you fit the description? All right. Um, there are plenty of very good lessons and breakdowns of Deuteronomy 28, the curses. And, um, but I wanted to do one as well because you never know who might hear my voice or hear how I break it down and able to wake up to who they are, who our creator is. You know, um, some people have the, the wrong idea about who the creator is and, and, and who the people are in the world. So um, I'm going to try to get through this as quick as possible. This is very detailed, but I'm not going to read the entire uh, chapter. Um, it, we don't really have to. There's some things you can come back and read later. And also, um, when I get to the word right here, you see the Lord right there. I'm going to use actually the, the Hebrew name for the Lord. I'm going to use uh, Yahweh. Uh, you might hear some people say Yehovah. You might hear some people say Yehovah. You might hear people just say Yah or Yehovah. But uh, at any rate, it, it's pointing to the creator uh, when, they, when they use that name, either, either one of those names. So I'm going to say Yahweh. And also when I get here, you see the word God. I'm going to be saying Elohim. Some people say Elohim, but we're referring to the title of our creator. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get started. But before I go to the curses, I want to read one blessing at the top. This is the Most High God. He's using Moses to communicate to the Israelites. And this is what he says right here. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. It reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, that means listen really good, listen good, unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yahweh thy Elohim, will set thee high above all nations of the earth. So the Most High right there says, you know, you do what I tell you to do. You stay away from the things that I tell you to stay away from. Um, then I'm going to put you over everybody. You're going to run things. Okay? So I want you to ask yourself if you're watching this video. I identify as a Hebrew Israelite. Um, I identify with the people. I, I, when I heard these curses, they rang out to me. To me, they rang out. So maybe they'll ring out to you. So I already know that my people are not high above all nations of the earth. Um, and it seems like we're all the way at the bottom. But we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. But he's telling Israel, like, do what I tell you to do. And um, I'm going to put you high above. So from, from verses 2 on through verse 14, these are all the blessings of doing what the Most High says. But right here you see, starting at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, these are the consequences to the Israelites. And let's read it. It says, But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. We know curses are a bad thing. They're the opposite of blessings. All right? So let's look at, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to read them all. So let's look at the, the first curse. Um, it says, Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Now, if you're so-called African-American, Negro, or people, the people that was once called nigger, uh, 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 or or colored, um, what I want you to do is think what people worldwide are cursed in every major city. All right? Think of, think of America. Think of Chicago, Houston, New York City, Los Angeles, uh, Detroit, you got you just, I mean, every major city. And who's cursed? Who's getting shot with their hands up and no weapons in their hands for a broken tail light or something like that, you know? Then it says, cursed shall thou be in the field. 
What people do you know were cursed in the field? Picking cotton, picking anything in the field. Think of every nation of people. Now, who can you come up with? Here's the Most High is talking to the Israelites, and he's telling them way back then that the, that curse shout, that shout means it's going to happen. It's a future prophecy, right? It's a future prophecy. So what people did that wind up happening to? Are those people these people? Let's keep reading. Deuteronomy 28 and 17, it says, Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. When we're talking about the basket and the store, we're talking about things that we purchase. I want you to look around wherever you are. If you're in a kitchen, I want you to look at your stove, your refrigerator, every screw that it took to make it, the, the screw that goes in your light switch, the light switch itself, the flooring. Who owns, who owns the company that makes those things? Every, every rack and shelf, the metal. Look at the clothes that you have on. Who owns the textile mills? Do you, the so-called Negro, own these things? No. These are other nations of people outside of the people who the Most High God is speaking to right here. If you're being honest about what you're looking at. All right? Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to. Read them all. Okay, let's skip to 19. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. I don't know about you, but when I'm coming and going, I can feel that pressure. I feel it. Hope I don't get pulled over. Those police lights go on. Please, please, I hope not coming for me. I just need to get where I'm going. I need to go in this store. I hope these guys that are asking for money or what, just asking, and you say no or whatever, they just go on their way, leave. All those things are curses because these are things that that terrify our communities. Those are curses when you're coming and when you're going. We have to hope that there aren't burglaries in our neighborhoods when we come and we go. We have to hope our kids are, are, are coming and going safely to school. All communities don't have those same type of worries, you know. All right. Uh, I'm going to jump down. Let's see. Which one do we want to look at next? Uh, okay. Let's go down to 28 and 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. Yahweh shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. See, I'm going to confuse these people. I'm going to cause confusion in your um, in your communities. I'm going to drive. You're going to be crazy, crazy people. Well, look at our look at our people. They're killing each other and been doing it at a, at a rapid rate. Our, we have teenagers in, in, in the ghettos with high volume military weapons killing each other. They're not shooting each other with, with little Saturday night specials. That's for those who don't know, that's a that's a little bitty twenty two gun that people used to carry for protection. No, they have high vi They're blasting each other to smithereens on the on the streets. So, let's go to the next one. I, and I don't know another people that that does that to each other. Um, thirty. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to ask, because I saw the movie Roots when I was a kid. I know one thing. When a slave man got him a wife, and they used to have the celebrations, and they would dance, and, and had a violin, and, and, and they would celebrate, the slave master would be watching. He'd be over in the cut watching. And as soon as the celebration was over, as the man was taking his would, would take his wife to the shack, the shed or whatever, to, to lie with her, the slave master would come in and tell that man to get out. And he would this then now the slave master started unbuckling his pants. See? So um that's what that's what we're um 
we're dealing with right here. We're dealing with a certain group of people who can really identify with this. I'm going to continue. Verse 30. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Well, the slaves built their slave master's houses. They built the White House. And I know what you're thinking. Well, we dwelled in there. We had Barack Obama. No, he's Kenyan. And we, that's another topic for another day. I know you're thinking, oh, but the skin, that's another topic. You're going to build the slave master house, but you don't get to live in it. You get to live in that shack. Continuing. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. You're going to grow his crops. Even his wine, his grapes. When you get ready to have a party, you're not invited. Okay? Continuing. Uh, let's jump down. 32. Oh, this is easy. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. There should be no might in thy hand. When slave catchers come and catch your kids, there's nothing you can do about it. You won't have any might to stop them. If you're already a slave and they get ready to slave your, uh, sell your kids off, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no might in your hand. Now, what other nation of people can identify with that? <laughs> All right, let's jump down. 35. And I know I keep going back and forth on this, uh, um, the Lord. I know I want people to be comfortable as well. You know, they're, they're not used to the names Yahweh and things like that. Um, Yahweh shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. That sounds like diabetes to me. To me it does. I watch family members get these same sores that could not be healed. I watch the amputations the saddest thing you can see of our people but most High said if you don't follow my commandments this is what's going to happen you're going to be amputated all right verse 36 yahweh shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known look and there thou shalt serve other gods look at these gods wood and stone all right, let's look at this. So the Most High said, I'm taking all of y'all, including your king. You're all going to another nation. And you don't know anything about this nation. When you get there, you're going to serve other gods. Other, look, look, look at the definition of other. I got, I got I already highlighted for you. Um, a different or additional one. So you're going to either serve an additional God to our Elohim or you're going to serve a totally different God you won't even be serving our most high in any way but when you, you can't serve another God because look the first commandment the most high God said in Exodus 20 and verse 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me so you, that's breaking the commandment then it goes on to tell us what type of gods these are. So wood god and the stone god. So if you're watching this, I want you to, to, to ask this question. What two faith-based religions has an important object made of wood? This object is important for in, in your mind, in your belief system, for your salvation. When I first saw this, it was Christianity, without a doubt in my head. Because I know that's how most of my people serve. The majority of my people are Christians, and that wood is important. And that person who died on that wood is important. And I also know my people, if they're not a Christian... They're over here with the stone. That's called Islam. 
Islam has a stone. It's called a Kaaba stone or also known as the black stone. And their God, with their God, it's important. That stone is important. They're supposed to travel every seven years to that stone and bow down in front of it and pray in front of it. That stone is important to them. Well, my, my Elohim, the creator of all things, said, Thou shalt have no other gods, other gods, other gods before me, other gods, wooden stone. So, that was the first commandment. I would think the first, the first commandment had to be very important to our most. That's the first thing he said not to do. All right, so now let's keep it going, though. Verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether Yahweh shall lead thee. Oh, you're going to be a proverb and a byword, an astonishment, right? Among all nations. Bywords and proverbs, these are words that you're going to be called, you're going to be called everything other than your true ethnicity. What you should be called, all right? They're gonna make up names for you. Now, said one other, you you're gonna be that N word. You're gonna be the, what they what they say, coons, jungle bunnies, porch monkeys. They said all these names that were given to uh to my people, uh, porch monkeys. Some horrible names. They even went on further, call you Afro-American. What's, what, what's an Afro-American? What is that? African-American. How are you named after two continents? That started around 1985, that movement. That's not what you are. You're not two continents. You have one pedigree. One, everybody does. Your pedigree comes through your father. That's another topic for another day. All right? So you're going to be a byword. And, and every country is going to always look at you as a byword wherever you go. So wherever you think you can run to and fit in, if you're a so-called Negro, if you can just run, run to and live peacefully and equally with those other people, forget about it. Because these curses say that the Most High is going to put a certain people, his people, in this. All right, uh, let's jump down. Verse 41, thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. Mm -hmm. Verse 43, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Look, the most high calls people strangers. You know why they're strangers? Because he ain't dealing with them. He's not dealing with them. They're not his chosen. Anything outside of his chosen, the stranger. So the stranger that is around you, that is within you, because there were always other people close by. So he says, the stranger that is within thee shall get up very, uh, get above thee very high. Remember in verse one, he said, if you do what I tell you, I'm gonna put you very high above all nations. So right here. He's saying the stranger's going to be above very high. So these are the, the nations he was talking about that you were going to be over. So here are the nations now, the stranger, they're going to be above you very high. And thou shalt come down very low. So-called black man, are you very low? Is it, is, do you get treated equally like every other nation of people? No. Verse 44. He, who are we talking about? The stranger. Still talking about the stranger, the nation. He shall lend to thee. So when you go to the bank to borrow, is it your people that own that bank generally? Nah. He shall lend to thee, and thou, you, shall not lend to him. We don't lend money to Chinese people. Where is our bank where Chinese people come in? It's not happening. It says he shall be the head. And thou shalt be the tail. He's going he's gonna to run things. He's going to decide your fate. Whatever you need, the stranger decides. All right? Verse 45, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee 
and pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenedest not unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. So he's reminding us of why these curses are here. And look what he goes on to say. The most I said, verse 46, and they, these curses, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. Let me read that again. I butchered that. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So these curses are here for you to read, look at, ponder, think about, say, wait a minute. These are a sign. And one, and it says, upon thy seed. So when he was talking to these Israelites way back then, he was saying that the, the seed, us, are going to read these curses and get a sign. Wait a minute. We fit this description. Hmm. And then he explains in verse 47. Because thou servest not. Yahweh thy Elohim with joyfulness. We're supposed to be happy about the commandments and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Man, you get to run the earth. If you do what I tell you to do and stay away from what I tell you to stay away from. We're supposed to be joyful about that. Verse 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Oh, the most high said we have enemies. Which Yahweh shall sin against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, the enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Ooh -wee. So now we already dealt with it. The most I say you got enemies. I know you heard certain speeches where everybody's supposed to be brothers and brotherhood and come together. And most high already claim you got enemies. And guess who sent them? I know, I know a certain faith taught you that all your enemies come from the devil. It's a lie. It says it right here. Yahweh shall send these enemies against you. And when he sent them, and you get off that slave boat, you're going to be hungry, you're going to be thirsty, and you're going to be naked. And everything you're going to want is going to come from you. Your enemy now. So you look at that refrigerator again and that stove and the clothes that you're wearing and the speakers with the music you listen to and you know where all those things came from. Okay? And it says that he shall put a yoke of iron upon our neck. What people do you know went into slavery with a yoke of iron on their neck? I've yet to see proof of anybody else. All right? Who fits the description so far? Verse 49. Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far. Oh, these, this enemy is going to come from a long way. They don't live near you. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. A nation whose language, look, tongue, thou shalt not understand. Tongue just simply means a language that you speak. Um, like what tongue is that? Oh, that's Spanish. What tongue is that? Oh, he's speaking French. See, Christianity went, snatched that word and gave you ha la 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 boca or whatever they say. That's not tongue. Tongue is just simply, they're going to speak a different language from you. They're going to come from a long way, from the end of the earth. They're going to come quick, too. Snatch y'all up, swift as the eagle flyer. Last time you look at the back of your dollar bill to see what animal is on that, the right side. What are those people trying to tell you? They're putting it right in your face. All you got to do is look at it. Verse 50. The same nation, a nation of fierce countenance. So these people are going to be fierce. They're going to have weapons. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. They don't care if your people are old or young. They're going to body slam an old 90-year-old lady. If they feel she out of pocket with them, they're going to shoot a 12 year old playing in the park with a toy. If they feel like it, they're not going to show favor. Let's jump down. Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. 
All right. Tend to remind you. Our brothers did. They used, they used to be, um, our brothers used to be tender with each other and delicate with each other. We, we used to handle each other with care. Some of us still do. We come in, we're slowly, so a lot of us are, are um, putting this curse behind us. And we got to do more of this. But it said, our, our ancestors, they used to be very tender and delicate. But, but now his, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. I mean, how many of you out here, if you so-called African-American or Negro, how many of you had somebody, one of your own, just looking at you with that evil eye, want to do something bad to you for no reason? That's a, that's a curse. It says also toward the wife of his bosom. A, a, a so-called black man to kill his wife. She five minutes late getting off the bus. He wondering where she been, who she been with. He ain't going to ask if the bus broke down or what was the problem. The, did somebody st stall in the traffic? No, nah, he coming for a throat. Some of us have seen that happen. That's a curse. It says, and toward the remnant of his children, where he shall leave. Which people? Which people on the planet Earth, on this planet? are notorious for having their children left by their father, by the man of the house. See what I'm saying? Who fits the description? Verse 56, we jumping down. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicate and tender. Look how tender women used to be. All right? But now her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son, and toward her daughter. Uh, a so-called black woman will call the police in a heartbeat on a man and her, her husband. She'll, she'll, she'll call the police, even if she wrong. And we know what the police coming to do. We know what they're coming to do. All right? They say, and toward her son. She, she'll look at her son, curse him out, say, you just like your no-good father. And toward her daughter. You, you're going to be nothing but a whore. Because I was a whore. That's what, that's what she's going to say to her daughter and her son. What other people says those kind of things to their kids. On a huge scale. like That's a curse. Verse 59 says, Then Yahweh will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuous and sore sicknesses and of long continuous. So we have people that's really going through things. They can't even figure out what's wrong with them. It's a curse. 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Misraim. That's the Hebrew name for Egypt. Which thou wast afraid of and they shall cleave unto thee. 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will Yahweh bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So there's going to be things that, that, that we don't even read about in Scripture that's going to afflict our people. All right, let's jump down. Verse 64. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there shalt thou serve, there we go again, other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. See, Moses, Abraham, and, and, and uh, Jacob, and uh, Noah, they didn't know these other gods. They wasn't calling on other names and bowing down to these rocks and kissing the cross and all that. They didn't do that. So our forefathers didn't know those things, these gods, even wood and stone. And also, it says, Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people. If you, anywhere you go in the, in the world, you're going to see us. I've been a few places myself, and I've seen us. We're scattered. All right. Uh, verse 65. And among these nations, when you get there, so when slavery scatters you, among these nations shall thy find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Let's break that down. Among these nations, you're not going to have any ease. You're going to always be worried about something. 
Now, I'm not talking about you Negroes that got it made and, and nothing goes wrong. <laughs> I've seen people just deny it. But I'm talking about the people experience. Maybe you're not us. Maybe you just look like us. Maybe your pedigree is that of another man and just DNA or, or, or um, you know, uh, uh, just, yeah, DNA and, and have it where you've taken on traits of, of, uh, of us, but your pedigree may be of someone else. And that's possible. Like I said, that's another subject another day. But our people say, it, it most actually, you're not going to have any ease. You're going to always be worried about something. You got to hustle. You have to hustle for these bills. Um, you're not going to just be able to pack a bag and say, you know what? I think I'm going to just tour the world and put a backpack on and just go in the mountains and just, huh. No, we have bills. We have kids. We have things. People we have to take care of. People are suffering in our families. You're not going to have that kind of ease. We have to panic when the police lights go on and tell everybody in the car to be cool. Let me do the talking. Pray to God the woman in your life doesn't say anything. Please just let me handle this. Kids, just be quiet. See, we have to we have to go through all this preparatory stuff because we don't have ease. See, neither the soul like fish should have rest. We when we take our vacations, we gotta stick to that that um schedule because we gotta get back. So our houses don't get broken in. We got we got bills. So we don't have that kind of rest. There's not a bailout plan for us like that. All right. So let's continue. Uh, 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night. And shall have none assurance of thy life. I don't even need to break that down. Read it again if you need to. Read it ten times. But that speaks for itself. And um, I'm going to do this last one right here. 68. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Mizraim again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. All right, so Yahweh's going to bring you to Egypt again. But this time with ships. Now, that could be literal. It could be literal. It could be figurative. Or it could be both. Uh, some people like myself, we believe Egypt is here. Um, we believe it's right here in the, in, the, in the Midwest going down through the south along the Mississippi River. Um, but at either rate, let's see what the Most High is, is also referring to. when He says, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again with ships. All right, let's go to uh, Exodus 20, and uh, back to Exodus 20, because we were just there, and uh, at the top. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, so we're getting ready to get a direct quote from our Creator, which we don't get in the New Testament. We, we, we don't get direct quotes. He doesn't speak to anyone. But another topic, another day. Verse 2, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Look what he refers to Egypt as. The house of bondage. Bondage is what? Right, slavery. So Egypt is referring to slavery. So he's talking about going into slavery again, but with ships this time. The first time the Israelites went into um, slavery in Egypt, they just walked them in, drug them in with horses and stuff. But this time they're going, you're going you're gonna to get off slave ships, like the most I said earlier. You have yokes of iron around your neck. Going them, but ships, naked, hungry, and thirsty. And um, this should be the last slavery right here. Thou should see it no more again. So we got to get right with our most high. Come back to him. Come back to him directly. Stop serving other gods. All right. And, he, and then he went on, right, right, he said, once again, you're going to be sold into your enemies. Who was the black man sold to? What people? So if this is talking about you, if he's talking to you, and your people were sold to your enemies, how are you going to sit at the table of brotherhood with someone who the most high said his people, your enemies? 
for slave men. Bond men is, is a slave. So look, check it out. Let's go into the tools and let's look at, at bond men so you can see for yourself with, with your own eyes. Bond men, the Hebrew word for that is Ebed, Ebed. And right here you see it's a slave. See right there? Slave, servant, man, servant. So a, a bond man would be a, a slave man. And a bond woman would be a slave woman. And it says, no man shall buy you. All right? What does that mean? Wait a minute. He already sold you. You're going to be sold. You're definitely going to be sold to your enemies. You're going to be a slave. But it says, no man shall buy you. What's he talking about? Well, let's see. Let's go to, uh, well, let's go on the tools again. Let's go on the tools. There it is right here. Shall buy. Kana. Kana is the Hebrew word. Um, right here. You got acquire, create, buy, process. Redeeming God, redeeming his people. So no man is going to redeem God's people. No man. Look at that, man. And we know a man is one who, who's in the flesh. Was born in the flesh. So some of you all think you got a man that's that that can save you from these curses. That's going to buy you out of, of all your troubles. You're calling on that flesh. And most high said no man. Can do it. See, Moses didn't do it. He just used Moses. It was the most high doing it. That's why throughout scripture, you always see see him reminding the Israelites who I am. I am. I am the Lord. He always said, I'm the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. All throughout Scripture, he says that. So he's reminding us that it's him. So that way you're not worshiping Moses because he was just a man. He was just flesh. All right? No man's going to buy you. No man's going to redeem God's people. He has to do that. Let's look at the definition of redeem. It says to buy back, to repurchase. Here's some more meaning. To free from what distresses or harm. Payment or ransom. Y'all say that God of the New Testament paid your ransom, yet your people went into captivity. Sometime after he, if he walked the earth, which I don't believe he did. But how did, if he can't redeem you, how did he pay the ransom? The most head just said, no man can pay that. No man can redeem you. Right? It also means to repair, to restore. All right. So that's what we just saw what buy means, redeem, the redemption of God's people. Repurchase, payment of ransom. So those are the curses. They're here for a sign and a wonder. I pray that the most high touch you. If you are so-called African-American, uh, black man, Negro, whatever you identify as, 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 a, as a people who, who are at the bottom of, of all these societies, I hope you return to, your, to our Elohim and, um, and, and come away from those other gods. But thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And until next time, shalom.